Mike Shack one two. Hello, hello, hello. Bongo Racing, never too old to race. We have so many fantastic members in the Bongo Racing community. I thought it was about time that we start to put some faces on the screens and find out more about these people. How they got into sim racing, how they discovered Bongo Racing. I hope you enjoy this chat. This is the first of hopefully many, and this is with our good friend Roger out in the US of A. So enjoy this fireside chat, the chat with Roger, and uh, next time it could be you. Roger. Never. Yes. Hi, buddy. How you doing? How are you? I've asked you to come and have a wee chat with me, just, just to have a chat. Just because we've never really had this chat, and uh, I want to okay, oh, hold on one second. Yep. This is this. This, this is, is this thing, chat. This is the thing you did with Aid. This is this chat. Um, so oh. I just want to have a chat so people can get to know you a wee bit more about you know the 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 the, the driver behind the name and the voice. So, um, who are you, and what do you enjoy, yeah, Roger? Aha. <laughs> uh, Roger Leopardi. Mm-hmm. Uh, um. Uh, I, what am I doing here? No, no, no. What do you enjoy? You? Oh, well, in uh, in two weeks I'll be fifty three. Oh, so um, two snap. years young, younger than you. Yeah, it's sad, isn't it? In our fifties now, it's terrible. And you are from America. I'm, we can tell. I I am. I'm from. Uh, I'm actually from South Florida, which is where I live. Um, I was born here, and. I've lived in I lived in Los Angeles for a little bit and then moved back here again and uh, been here most of my life. And at a high level, then, I mean, what if you can tell us what do you do for work or what sort of things are you involved with there? Uh, I'm in entertainment. Um, I used to be in the music business back in the early '90s. Uh, I was a my brother and I were recording artists and um, we. Uh, wrote and produced music and we were the artists as well and we had a couple hit records back in the the 90s in the united states and in germany and south america and no i'm not going to tell you what it is and because that's a different life and i don't want to talk about that and then (laughs) i moved on to uh to um staying in kind of the production world and started producing commercials and uh and i've been doing that for you know, like 25 years. And, uh, and that kind of led me into voiceover, which I've been doing for a little over 20 years. And, 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 you, and, my bit. and you work from home quite a bit because I mean, when we're on, you go off to record a bit or a, a thing or yeah. Yeah. So uh, that yeah, keeps you busy. Yeah. All of my work is done, is done from home. The only time I ever went to a studio is when I lived in Los Angeles. And that was only because in that town, um, a lot of the time, you know, it's just, it's a big, it's a big show. Yeah, yeah. So they want you at the studio because they're, you know, agencies are bragging to their clients and it's a big, it's a big thing. That's brilliant. Okay. That's exciting. That's good. Um, family, kids? Uh, I have a wife and two sons, my wife, Jackie. Uh, we've been married for 28 years. We've been together for oh, like 30, 30 ish, 31, something like that. And um, I have two sons, uh, 27 and 16. We waited a, a while to have the other one, and power cut. And and it was and it was great. It was like it was like a total reset. Total reset. I think it kept it kept me young. I probably would be older right now if I didn't. Well, have you would you wouldn't think I'm 85 with all the young kids that we have around, but it keeps me very young. <laughs> no, you're going backwards. Yeah, I go back. I'm never getting away from nappies. Just never. Um, no nope, fear. Okay, so an odd question here, but um, yeah. is there one thing that that I mean we've known each other for about which is over a year now? But I mean, is there something that you could surprise me? To find out about yourself, I and mean, is there something that we don't know apart from Roger, the voiceover artist, that's in the entertainment entertainment business, who drives Porsches, who isn't too you know shabby on the track? Is there something that you could shock me with? I mean, is there something you would you'd be willing to tell me that would surprise people that a skill, uh, a thing you do, or whatever it may be? Well, I have a couple things that you may be interested in. Um, I'm well, I'm a fisherman. 
Um, I've been a fisherman my whole life and that I'm a professional fisherman. Um, and I love that. Um, that's probably my favorite thing like in the world. Now, are we, we're not talking about like at the end of the pier. You're talking about big game stuff. I mean, Florida is no, the perfect I, place for that. I yeah. I mean, I live in, in, you know, we have the, what's known to be the best fishing in the entire world as mm. far as, uh, almost all saltwater and freshwater. And, um, no, my my specialty is for, I don't I don't use any kind of dead bait or anything like that. I only use lures. I only use light tackle. Wow. So for a fight, um, and I use light tackle for big fish. Um, and the advantage is fish, and that's the idea. Is just same same reason I drive the Porsche. I want to go harder. Challenge a bit harder. Of, of Exactly. That's how I do everything. I remember once I was in San Francisco and uh, we were at a big exhibition and we'd, we'd, we'd fell in friendly with this taxi driver guy. It was myself, my two bosses, two brothers. And he decided, you know, I tell you what, guys, he seemed to be the same guy. We had him all the time. Let's go out fishing. And he arranged us to go out and underneath the Golden Gate Bridge and a way out. But unfortunately, I was, I, I was worse for wear. And uh, yeah, I, I remember heaving to quite a bit that day. But it was quite an experience going under the Golden Gate. We had good fishing out there, but that was, yeah, that's my only only experience with any sort of big fishing like that. So, yeah, that's well, cool. When you, when you do come back over yeah. here, we yeah. absolutely will do it because by the time you get here, I'll have a boat again. I'm just waiting until we get in the house and get settled in and then I'll buy another boat. And then, um, and then the other thing is, is that um, I'm a baseball player and I've been for my whole life. Wow. And that's another thing that... Nice. Um, that actually, uh, it's funny because, you know, uh, I could have gone pro um, and and didn't because the opportunities presented themselves at the same time as far as my recording industry thing goes. And baseball, because I grew up doing it, I hated it. You know, it was kind of forced on me and I was good at it and that made it even harder. And, you know, because my dad put a lot of pressure on me at the time and I just, I couldn't stand it because of that. Um but oddly enough, after I got married and started a life, um, I started, I, I loved the game. So I started playing competitive um, A-League softball. Okay. And it's competitive. I mean, it's competitive, like, you know, like the racing. And there was a scout there for the Marlins. Wow. At, at, I was 28 years old and they asked me to do a walk-on, uh, to be a walk-on, to, to do a tryout. Okay. And, uh, and that was it. That was all I needed was that compliment. Um, because I didn't do it because there was no reason, there'd be no reason to do it. I had already had a life. And in order to do that, I would have to go backwards and you have to start like in their, you know, their, their, their lower leagues yeah, and, yeah. you know, and you have to travel. Well, it was nice. Make- to, it was nice to know that you could have had that life. It was, that was there, you know, the different roads that we all go down and the decisions that we make. Okay. Exactly. That's cool. Exactly. That really is cool. The, the opportunity was yeah. there. That was, you know, who That's knows nice. if I would have actually made it, but the opportunity was there. They thought enough to ask me and that was it. So that, that, that was complimentary enough. Yeah. It's funny. A couple of the guys I raced motocross with when I was nine, or when I was up to 19, my last year, a couple of the guys went off. And they started Supercross was just really starting there. And they started on that winter league with Supercross. And, and, and I had the option, but a job was offered to me. <laughs> and that's the decisions that you make, you know. So it's it's funny how life, how life turns. So exactly. we, we have that exactly. competitive thing in, in us. Speaking of competitive things, let's get to sim racing. Yes. Your family, uh, sim racing is a big part of your life. So yes. h- how do they describe your hobby? So, for example, my wife, Judith, kind of is getting it now, now that it's got a heck of a lot more serious, but it's still almost a snigger from friends and relations. Is it, is it a, how, how would they describe it? Um, well, my wife, I would say probably, um, just loves her freedom. <laughs> um, it, you know, and, and, you know, and we've always, you know, we've always done, you know, I mean, I know, I know we wanted to be funny, but you know me, uh, I'm not capable of no, like, no. I'm funny when I'm funny and I, I got to be serious when I'm serious. Yeah. And, and the thing is, is like with Jackie, um, we have our, we have our, our separate lives. We have our together life and, and, you know, 
she, whatever I'm doing, if it's not doing any harm or anything like that, she, it doesn't, you know, you so she doesn't pay focus. it any mind at all. She yeah. just asked me, am I making any money doing yeah, it? There you go. There you go. And, and between like, times. No. no. Uh, I said, but I'm making really good friends. Yeah. I'm meeting some great people. And that, uh, that's worth way more than money to me. Well, well that, sort of, uh, that sort of brings it around a wee bit. So again, we know each other for about a year and a bit now. Um, how did you, I remember vividly the first time you met, but how did you come across us in that little group back then, which we really wasn't anything apart from a couple of guys racing together. And I had a few basic streams up at that stage. So how did you come across Bongo Racing? Well, um, me and Laurent and Travis and Leo would always drive together. It was just the four of us. And most of the time it was me and, and Laurent, you know, Travis, you know, more often, but mostly me and, and, and Laurent. And, uh, and, you know, and we knew how we respected each other on the track. We were trying to get faster. We were trying to get better. We were trying to, trying to hone our skills, but we wanted to do it in a way that we would like to see in public rooms that we were not seeing. Yeah. You know, we want to race close. That's what's exciting. Close. It doesn't even matter if you win when it's a, when it's close racing, it's exciting. And if you lose, you lose, who cares? You just want to watch the replay, you know? So, uh, uh, with that in mind, um, one day I was watching, uh, YouTube and, uh, I happened across yours and, uh, and I was just listening to you talk and, and, you know, you were funny and you seemed really genuine, you know, and, and I kind of pride myself on being able to, you know, kind of nail people on their, you know, who they really are yeah. underneath something. Yeah. And, uh, and I saw, I saw that you, you were, a there was no question that you were actually a really good person. So, and I'm not one of those people that's afraid to say hi, Yeah. you know? And, uh, and, and that's shocked. it. And I, you know, I kind of just almost opened the door and walked in and asked if it was okay. And it was pretty, you know, I remember that first night I thought, Frank, man, these bloody loud Americans. <laughs> yeah. And, well, it wasn't me. It was Trav. But... <laughs> because we've always, yeah, I'd always Trav, but I didn't know at the stage it was Trav. <laughs> but I, I, we were racing with, with some English gentlemen at the time are still good buddies. They're still the majority of those guys are all there. They're founding members, I suppose. But we were all like, take, they were taken quite aback because they're reserved English guys. But it's been absolutely wonderful. Um, yeah. And uh, I mean, we talked about Travis. Travis is the life and soul. He's a, a great lad. Unfortunately, he's out with gear at the moment. But we'll get back. But yeah, it's been it's been brilliant. It has been really good, and we have learned together, and we have pushed each other. And it's it's Absolutely. just been amazing what we've achieved. Um, well, speaking of Travis's gear being out, did you? St- how did you start sim racing then? I mean, did you start with a basic wheel, or what did you start with, or how, what? I suppose serious stuff. I mean, we all have right. had our run-ins with Gran Turismo and earlier stuff. But when did ACC and that sort of thing start? Right. Well, um, not long before I met you. Um, as far as ACC goes, I would actually only really recently been driving ACC, mm. uh, prior to meeting you. Um, I had the gear before that, um, for about a year, but it was a year of, of, um, not consistently driving because it hadn't really become part of, uh, and it, I always wanted, I didn't want to do it by myself. I yeah. always wanted to do it with friends. I like gaming with friends. I don't like gaming or doing anything just, you know, except for fishing. I like doing it by myself, you know? Um, but, um, so what happened was, uh, see what happened was, um, what happened, what happened was, um, I'm one of those all in kind of people. Okay. So I kind of did my research and. But I still didn't, uh, uh, this particular thing, I, I was afraid to go all, all in because yeah. it was really, it would be really expensive. expensive. Yeah. Um, but m- the very first thing that I got was um, a DD1 was my first um, wheelbase with the the formula no. kit. That yeah. one. And then I additionally, I bought their, um, the, the good, Porsche wheel, the original Porsche wheel uh, that that they came out with, the one that's for the uh, for the DD one, 
And I guess I love Porsche. So I wanted the wheel, even if I didn't use it, it was awesome. And, um, and then I got the play seat pro Red Bull because I love F1. So that's really what I thought I was going to be doing was open wheel. Um, and at the time I did it on a, on a PlayStation. I was doing like a set of Corsa on a, on a, on a PlayStation. Then I started watching these videos, you know, of, of just other gamers, other people doing sim racing, you know, people that I kind of stumbled across like Dan Suzuki and just, you know, the normal people. Yeah, and the and, guys, yeah. Exactly. And then I would hear like, you know, like crew chief doing its thing. I'm like, what the hell is I that? that? Like that, I want I want that, that kind I want of that. immersion. How did I get yeah. That? And then it, it's like, that's awesome. I want to say my name while I'm doing it. Yeah. What? No. So, so then I was like, oh shit. Now this means I got to buy a PC. I've never owned a PC in my entire life. You know, I'm a studio person. I'm a Mac person. I'm a, everything is Mac, yeah. you know, nothing's PC. So after I spent all this money on that, I'm like, all right, well, I need a gaming PC. Didn't really know anything. Got what was decent enough that I could do VR and stuff in. Um, and does this story need to be shorter? Doesn't matter. I don't care. This is broke. Oh, okay. This is okay. Cause you know this, cause you know, this stuff. I'm incapable of making it short. So <laughs> what do you get the um, French one? All right, all right. Just, I just like you know, wait you know, until you know, I get to the French bond. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, so you know, I get that, I get that gear. Then I go through the process of, you know, like, uh, um, and I was at the time after I switched to PC, no ACC. Mm. That was like, that was, uh, huh. you know, it made no sense to me. But uh, besides the fact that I loved Open Wheel, so I was, I, I was a uh, from the beginning with AMS two. Okay. So all I really did was the open wheel stuff on AMS two. That's all I drove. And I drove in VR and it was awesome. And Travis would come over and he would try it. And then, you know, and, and, and you know, his, his cousins would come over and they would try to be like, oh, it's freaking awesome. It's so sick. Blah, blah, blah. I feel like I'm there. And you, you know, Travis. So yeah. it's incredible. So anyway, after I realized how much I loved it, I'm like, all right, I got to start going I got to start. Um, I need to. I want myself this. Stuff. Other I want the stuff that the guys like Max Verstappen and uh, and the guys who I love, real racers. I want what they use to practice for real in real life. So I did my research and found the gear. Um, and the first thing I the first thing I got though was a was a custom wheel though, and it was from Gomez and. uh, and he built my wheel online. So it's, there's a, a yeah, yeah. he did, yeah, one. Yeah. I was one of the ones that on, on yeah. what he, exactly. So it was awesome. Got it. And as that was being built, Grid announced the Porsche wheel that they were doing. And I was the second person, uh, pre-order for it. Beautiful Porsche wheel. Oh my God. So I get my GSI wheel. Oh no. So what well, it's a semi tube then as well. So, yeah, so what happened was when I ordered the, the Gomez wheel, when it was finally being built, you know, he was like, he's like, you really need to get a Simicube 2 Pro. He goes, it's just, you know what I mean? And I'm like, okay. And then, and then when I did that, I realized, all right, well, it's I'm going to need a different, I'm going to need a different rig. And when I did that, I'm like, I right, well, I'm going to need a different computer. And then I'm going to need a different pedal i'm gonna need different pedals yep. and i'm gonna need every Dying single thing in my entire rig so my old my old rig became travis's rig because i wanted travis to be able to do this okay. with me so and i knew he he wasn't in a position to to yeah, okay. get something so i gave it to him for practically nothing you know i gave it to him for like what you know what a what a pedal would cost yeah. the whole thing including the computer everything and uh, we've, had awesome. money, we've had our money. We've had our money. Travis. We have. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, so that was awesome because because I'm like, all right, now, and I know Travis is going to be good at it. You know what I mean? Uh, so anyway, so he got my old rig. I got a whole new custom rig. Everything on it was custom. And uh, and then somehow started doing ACC, and uh, and I loved gt yeah racing i just loved it and it was just and it took it took me to a different place and opened up my world in in real world as far as racing goes 
and and the interest that I interest, take absolutely. and this led and and this led me into endurance WEC and the love for that it's all freaking so awesome uh I love it I love right. it but yeah like you came very like me I, I look back at the little intro video that I before the start of my stream and that ring that said in that video there's apart from this I think the screens are the only thing that is the same in that and that's in less a year and then you know the rig the PC the wheel, multiple versions of it, every aspect of it has been has changed. It, it, but it's been, uh, it, it has enriched my life, not just in from racing motocross years ago and being around motorsport with my mom and dad all the time with motorbike racing. But it's given me it's given me that it, that that thing that the competitive thing that the itch scratches that itch. But the community yeah. side of it, and all the, the how I more interest in GT three. I've been to some races now in, in real life, and the, but the, the community and the friendship side of, is is the best part of it for me. Okay, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Yes, the the driving's awesome, the equipment's mm -hmm. awesome, all that, and the the authenticity is is awesome. But yes, all of this stuff, all these relationships that we've established, and all these different people that we've met and the different personalities and, and people that have come out of their shell because we, because we make it easy for people to yeah, communicate absolutely. and have fun. Epic. Love it. Epic. Okay. So if you're, if you were starting off, what advice would you give somebody to, if they're willing to start today? So what would be the one piece of advice you would give them about getting their kit or getting started? Well, um, this is always a tricky, tricky thing. I mean, and, and obviously, because everybody's budgets are so different mm. and, and, you know, and it, it's so easy for somebody who, who's in a better position to say, this is the best and this is what you should do and blah, blah, blah. And, and, you know, and, and, but the, what I will say is this, um, if you don't have anything, um, and you're starting from scratch, um, you have to under you have to know your personality. Yeah, that and to me, that's what you have to know. If you know you're the kind of person who, who, um, once you're in something, you're in it. Mm. You don't half-ass it. You're not like, yeah, you know, this week I'm going to play Borderlands, and next week I'll be on ACC, and the week after I'm going to be on Minecraft. Oh, this and, is all you know, yeah, yeah. I mean, do you are you the kind of person who does something? And you want to be the best you can be at it. Not about you being better than anybody else. You want to be able to be good at something that you do. If that's the case, then um, I would say I'll always save a little bit more instead of jumping right into it as much as you may want to, you know, try to get the best gear that you can the first time. Because it, inevitably you will spend two or three times. Yeah, it just ends up happening, and and fortunately you are in something that it is easy to sell gear because there's always somebody wanting to 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 do it. It's just that you know, like if you live in the UK, and the guy who wants to buy it's in Texas, you're not going to make any money. Yeah, and it's going to be. I, mean, I I started, but before I started, oh. I dipped my toe in the water in the second-hand market, so I bought a second-hand DD1, and I bought a brand new, now, even a first rig was second-hand. Um, and then when I realized that oh, this is it, um, I went the whole hawk and, and please, I've spent five figures or more, well more than five figures in the last year. Just, just yeah. phenomenal. Um, okay, so um, you, you came across us, and I know you watch some other guys. You follow other bits and pieces on YouTube. Is there is there good guys out there that we should be watching as well? That you know, who are some of the other people you watch on on YouTube? I mean, I don't really, I don't really watch. Or do you read um, any other other I, I've looked at uh, you know, I've looked at other people. You know, Dan Suzuki is somebody that I, I, I don't. It's not like I watch him. It's his voice. Um, so, yeah when it is it, his voice um now, when, when it comes to um knowledge i look to him because i know he has an engineering background and and yeah. i i you know and in his personality he's really anal about things and and so that's the guy i want to know what he has to say about something i don't make it the be all end all mm. i i take it for what it's worth and and make whatever determination myself through process of elimination. I may see what he has to say, and and then I may see what you know 
some professional driver real in real life who uses gear, what they have to say and what they're using. But that's kind of how I try to, to base my, 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 um, my opinion on that kind of stuff. And it's is, amazing though, guys like that and the, and guys now that are professional racers, I mean, uh, you, you mentioned Max Verstappen using sim kit an awful lot, you know, but it's yeah. more and more and more and more of this next generation of drivers are using the same kit using the same software as we're using and that is that is superb and, and getting their opinions and people like Dan Suzuki the chap in Australia as well is also very very good who does the reviews yeah. the AMS uh, four uh, the boosted chap, me the AMS2 guy that you put me in, in touch with um, uh, nice yeah, chap that does the really really good reviews so there's yeah. there's lots of good stuff out there as well um, exactly and Daniel Morad you oh, know Daniel, even though he's yeah. not an ACC guy but he's still a professional driver and and it's, it's always good to get you know to see what those guys are saying just in general about the gear hmm. so where you do you, where do you think it's going to be in 10 years time it's came on so much in 10 years so even five years yeah. well, where do you think I mean, some I, racing will be in in five years even I think it's going to be it's going to be where it was starting to go during COVID when these guys couldn't go out on the track for real and they were broadcasting on ESPN races, iRacing races. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm not an iRacing guy, but that's the platform that, you know, that 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 has like it all together yeah. right yeah. now. So um but I believe that that's that is where it's gonna it's gonna go. There will be absolutely there'll be professional sim leagues. Not that there aren't now, but I mean professional like you know, like uh, WEC yeah. having and having a an a, 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 an the, online branch. The Formula One thing has fallen apart. The Formula One esports stuff has, has has fallen apart through the, through contract negotiations and other bits and pieces and mishandling. But yeah, I think you're right. I think it's a serious thing now. And and when you see, uh, funny you mentioned Borderlands. I was watching the Borderlands trailer for the new thing coming up and we, we were talking about it at the podcast the gaming podcast overseas connection that I'm involved with and it, it was a case of like this generation of people now the guys that are 40 and 50 are quite accepting of that because we've grown up with that now it's not this oh it's a video game thing but you know right. with, with stuff like The Last of Us and all of that it's become mainstream now and that watching racing and my sons watch or the the F one when it was going they were they were tuned in every week and they knew all about it and so um yeah I think you're right I think that's always going on okay we're going to wrap this up very shortly um do you have do you have a really memorable moment is it a race or something that happened is there some memorable moment from sim racing something that was a few euphoric or really good or that you you remember a, a particular battle or Oh, no, spot. I can't say it's specific. I've, I've had so many really good battles. Um, I, I can just say not a you, uh, yes, euphoric e type moment. I can't tell you exactly when it was, um, because it, it because it ha it continually happens in in yeah, stages. Yeah. yeah, and they're almost like these. And this is what I tell the guys in our group. You know, guys that are maybe not as good a drivers yet. Um. They're, you know, they're struggling or whatever. And I'm like, look, you'll go for months and months and months. And then all of a sudden, you won't even realize what happened, but you felt something that you never felt before. You accidentally did something and you felt grip maybe where you yeah. never felt it before in a turn. And you're like, what did I just do? And then, so you stumble across something and then you start doing it. And you're, and all of a sudden you're at a completely different level than you were yeah. for, for the four months prior. And then you go through your next phase of you've got that, that kind of thing that you've learned and now you're applying it and you hyper-focus on it because that's all you're doing is you're just learning how to use your brake and how to use your brake to steer. You know, like if that's, if that's what, was, what you accidentally discovered. And what happens is, is these things continually happen so I think you're always having that kind of moment. And for me, those moments are are bigger than the races because those are the things that help you become a really good driver. Yeah, I think the, and, the, close, the close quarter stuff that we have a lot, we get a lot of that. But I think some of the most rewarding things for me is watching, well, 
my own progress. Uh, I've came on leaps and bounds, and one I've been watching Travis and yourself and everybody coming on, Steve and all of the guys, and uh, you know, coming on leaps and bounds. But the thing I get some of the biggest joy from is watching people like Steve Baker, uh, and, you know, those guys, you know, coming on, Dara coming from nowhere and and really getting it and and being part and, and they're getting it along with us and they're you know and and we, you know it's and that's 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 the one of the best things that I've got out of this is helping other people to get there and enjoy it as well because I can't believe how competitive that top half of the field is now and even the bottom half of the field they're competitive with each other um, yeah okay um what was the last thing you googled Roger the last thing I googled was let me look right real quickly. <laughs> this is going to be so stupid. Yeah. Let me go to my uh The last thing I googled was how to set up because I was having such a hard time with this I can't get anybody to help but Paul is finally going to help me hopefully. Mitchell, um how to set up a, a ubiquity unify uh simple home network okay nerd okay so anything i should have asked you but i didn't um no no and and just real quickly what you were just touching touching on as far as like the rewarding part with the with the guys and mm. and you know and their betterment and and yeah no question that that's the best thing really um, your question to me though was about the about you know euphoric moment kind yeah. of thing. So, um, but absolutely, that's that is so rewarding. That's what I that's what I love about what what we've been able to do with this. You know, uh, Dan and I were talking about it the other night, and um, and I've talked about this with you before too. But you know, it, it's what I love about this is yes, bongo racing. Robin, Robin's the face of the channel, okay? But this is the only, I, I think it's fair to even say, this is the only channel out there that's actually a community channel. Mm. This is a okay. community channel yeah. that does have a face, but it's got a million voices. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I think so, and... I mean, I'm, oh, I can be a bit of a stickler, but I, I mean, I want it to be a, it's a very friendly place, a place for gentleman drivers, whatever that, what, then to me, that means you drive hard, but you drive fair and you make a mistake, you let someone pass, you know, and, and the, I think that comes as a shock to some people that are coming in new, because when we see new people that have came in with to work in, uh, that have driven in other leagues or other communities and they drive really quite widely without consideration for, for other people. And I don't think that's anything to do with them. It's just that's what people are used to. They're not used to this. And uh, that's brilliant. And uh, and I and uh, having this team of us all around wanting that same thing, that same common mindset is, is uh, from all parts of the world, literally from people that don't even speak English that well, you know, that are that are in our community that have been from almost day one. I think like Ozan and, you know, and, and people that we came across. Brilliant, brilliant. It's that, it's lovely. It's very rewarding. Yep. yep. So, yeah. It's a, tr it's a true community channel. Well, thank you, Roger. And thank you for sticking with the sketch okay. in Northern Ireland. And and thank hey. you. Thank you for taking a little bit of time tonight and having a chat. Thank you for starting it. And thank you for... Uh, Didn't mean to. For having me and, and thank you for allowing allowing uh allowing you know me to be a part of it so brilliant all right thank it. you see you out there see you on track that's it you're just going to eject just like that like you always do Lorenz yeah. going to love this ending because you're literally just going to eject me that's okay yeah 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 my wife, my, should, my wife i think you should just complains a lot about when i'm on the phone and then i go yeah uh-huh right thanks good right bye <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, you know, this this is really how you. <laughs> what a! <laughs> Thanks, everybody. See you later. Bye bye.